Greetings, welcome to Tech 3D, Neil Cross here, right mate, today in this video, we're going to talk more about the Vault Word Group uh, thing, uh, if, but if, before I do get started, if you've got any strong thoughts and opinions on this, leave us a comment down below about it first before I get started, because I read them all, and I try to respond to as many of them as I can in the first couple of days, and whilst you're down there, there's a like button over there mate, click that, because that shares the video into other people who are like you, who might want to see this, it brings them in, and then you can read feedback from other people who were in similar situations to you and you can sort of bounce stuff off them it's uh it's good for that kind of thing and if you're not subscribed already do that as well because i do autodesk -y software explained -y and what's the best tech for autodesk software type videos if you want to see more stuff like that anyway vault word group <laughs> so after the after the last video where i, I talked about vault word group being cancelled or as someone so eloquently tried to chastise me in the comments, I think retired is more appropriate way, but <laughs> didn't really chastise. But uh, no, cancelled, mate, because that's how YouTube works. <laughs> got to play the game. Uh, the, the friendly neighbourhood vault team got in touch and just pointed out uh, an error or two. Uh, one error from me uh, and, and an error from them in a, a sort of roundabout way. So I mentioned in the Vault World Group video that the end date or the start of the end the Vault Work Group was July 6th, 2022, and that's three weeks away. Yeah, they, they pointed out that that's not three weeks away. <laughs> I was definitely jet lagged. Uh, that's, in fact, seven weeks away. So, correction on that. Neil learned to count. But the next error on my part, but I still stand by why I interpret it this way. So, I mentioned in the first video that on July 7th, which is the day after the whole thing starts uh, sort of being kicked into motion, the Vault account manager is going to get Vault Pro everyone else is going to stay on work group and that's to facilitate with testing. And then on the first renewal after July 6th, everyone's going to get Vault Pro. Uh, the, the friendly neighborhood Vault team said, that's not the case. Everybody gets Vault Pro on July 7th. I said, well, why did you just say that? <laughs> that was easy, wasn't it? Just say that. Uh, but no, they're frequently asked questions, said otherwise. It doesn't matter. It's not important. But um, yeah, just long story short, on July 6th or July 7th, the day after, if you've got 100 licenses of Vault Work Group, you'll get 100 licenses of Vault Pro, one in a full allocation to Vault Pro. Mm, someone's already mentioned it, so, you know, it, you don't need to be a genius to work this out, but if everyone gets Vault Pro the day after, you know, July 6th, and you can still renew Work Group for another year, in fact, you can still renew Work Group for three years before July 7th or July 6th, What's stopping you placing a three-year order now for Vault Work Groups and you get Vault Pro for three years at Work Group pricing? I mean, you know, it's the pricing, like I said in the first video, is ch it's cheap in re you know relative to Autodesk's other licenses. It's not the kind of saving that you, you know it's going to make or break your business, and you're going to you know have such a cost saving that it's going to it's going to change your your forecasting and all that kind of stuff. But mm, I, mm, anyway, so there's that. Um, but I, I want to talk about the upgrade and the migration because what I said in the first video was some companies are going to have it easy for migrating and up, you know across from work group to professional. Some companies are going to have a sprinted uh, or are going to need a big approach and vault consultant and resellers and all that kind of stuff. So the reason I've, uh, the reason I put it that way is because I from day one of running this channel I've I've never and I never will advocate that anybody should be trying a vault migration themselves. Now, to be clear, the vault team have done an exceptionally good job of making vault easier to upgrade and install over the years. It's a lot better than it used to be. It used to be an absolute horror show. It's a lot better than it has been. But I, I can't go on record and say just everyone should just give it a shot because things can and do go wrong, even in the most simplest, straightforward, stock factory nothing's changed kind of sites. It's just out-the-box sites. You can do an in-place migration and the database could fail to migrate and it could just stick, seize up, mid-migration. And if, you, if you've never done this before, you're f***ed. You, you really are. And you, if you don't have the experience on how to get around that or the contacts to speak to, to bring in, to get that fixed pretty quickly, what do you do? You, what do you do? You're screwed. Just wouldn't recommend it. Never will. Yeah, for simple sites, these are the companies that are kind of two seats, right? You know, you've, you've got a couple of CAD clients. Those are the ones that should just take a couple of days in theory. The more complicated sites that I was referring to or alluding to are the ones where, look, Vault Workgroup doesn't have the facility to be customized as extensively as the likes of Vault Pro, but 
some work group sites may have 50 to 100 clients. That's a lot of installs to do. That needs time and planning because that's 50 to 100 engineers or designers and drafters who you're going to have to sort of micromanage when you can do the installs. That's a lot of systems that are they, are they supported? You're going to have to go and check them. What, what stuff do they have on there? Are you going to remove the old stuff, put the new stuff on? What order are you going to do it in? Are you going to go to that group of PCs first, that group of PCs first? Are you going to do it remotely? Are you going to do it in person? That needs planned. You might have, and not all of this applies at once. This could be a combination of all of these things. But in big sites, a lot of companies have custom exporters for builds materials out from CAD clients. Some of those exporters might have API integrations into Vault. So that link to, to, to extract builds and materials, some might just pull it from the CAD files, but even then it might still have API calls to Vault Workgroup. You just don't know. You can't just expect it to work. Even if you're staying on Vault 2023, you can't just expect it to work crossing platforms. You've got to test it. And that requires going to the people who wrote your custom add-ins, asking them to migrate it, and then testing it. And the only way you can test it really is by building a test environment. And this is all outside the scope of anybody who works in an engineering business. They don't have the time for this. IT generally are terrified of doing this sort of stuff. And that's why you need to bring someone else in to do it. Uh, there's that. Uh, you might have custom life cycles. You might have custom content center libraries. You might have, there's all kinds of stuff. This It's just added complexity during a migration. And just build it just as part of the various sprints. Each one of these would be a sprint for testing. Just build a test server, clone your live server, and run a test in isolation just to make sure everything's fine. But like I said, that's outside of the scope of what anyone in engineering should be doing. Yeah, that's that, that's that's what I would refer to when I said it's a bit more complicated for some other companies. You might be going from Vault Work Group 2019 to 2023. Again, another complication. The average person who's just got, oh, how hard can it be? Ah, this is going to be like, you just stick them, you just, just double click the executable and let it run. You, you can't just migrate from Vault 2019 to Vault 2023. You've got to piggyback through a different or a, through, an, through an intermediate version. The average person wouldn't know that. They wouldn't know that until they tried it. What what else do they not know that's just lurking around the corner? There's the supported SQL platform, the supported operating systems, the service pack that need to be on for SQL. Right, now I've also heard quite a few people on LinkedIn and across various comments saying, we don't, I'm a bit, we're a bit unhappy with this because we don't really need Vault Pro. We're quite happy with work groups. So just to be clear, if you want, you can migrate to Vault Pro, which you will end up paying more for. It, that's unavoidable. But you can migrate to Vault Pro and you can disable the Vault Pro functionality. So the item master, the change orders, all that kind of stuff, you can disable it and it will just work the same way as Vault Workgroup. If you do a proper migration, uh, you will all, all your settings, all your life cycles, all your customizations will stay. So it'll be a proper migration. So there's not really a learning curve. The interface is pretty much the same. But if you are of the mindset of, well, we don't really need all this extra stuff that we're being forced to pay for, what I would say is you might think that, but just do a bit of research because there is actually quite a fair bit in Vault Pro. Vault Pro is the one that's been getting all the love over the last few years. There's quite a lot in there that you might actually think, yeah, that's actually pretty good. But you don't know that until you kind of shown it. And one of the things would be the change orders. You don't get those in Vault Workgroup. Vault Professionals got digital change orders. And most companies who are using Vault Workgroup, the fact that they've got Workgroup means that they're probably using life cycles and revision schemes. That means they will have a change system to track how parts change and designs change. So they can, if they're audited, there's some kind of audit trail for, for change that's pretty essential in an engineering business. That's not going to be done in Vault at the moment, which means it's either being done in another system, which is not optimal, or it's being done in Excel, which is as low, it, it's as worse on paper. It's just as least optimal as it gets. Well, Vault's got a digital change order system where you can create a change order record in Vault, attach the actual files to the change order that are being changed, like physical, tangible, digital attachment of the files. And then you can create groups of people who are involved in the change. They can be assigned to the roles. They get pinged notifications. It doesn't work brilliantly, but they can be pinged notifications when a change order is for their attention. And the change orders can be, they can be viewed externally by people who aren't even Vault users and web clients and whatnot. And, you know, people downstream procurement and purchasing, if they need to see what's under change, if a customer asks for a part, they need to be able to see, is this part currently on a change? It can go to a web client and see that. And that's all done inside Vault. It's all integrated. It's all tied together. 
So there's that. That is very, very useful. And you're going to get that. It's got replication, for example. And replication is only really useful if you've got more than one site. You, you can't just use replication if you if you don't have a need for it. But if you've got a site in the UK and a site in Germany, for example, and you both share parts, share data, what might happen is you might sort of send files across a, a Windows server and you've got a file in the UK, a file in Germany, the same file, but it's located in two different locations, and you're just locking it down using Windows permissions to keep it locked. It's not the most secure way of doing it. Someone can easily still edit one of the parts in one of the regions, and you end up with version mismatching across regions. Or what if you want to collaborate on the same project in two regions? How do you do that? You use Vault Replication. It takes your Vault in the UK, and it basically creates a clone of it in Germany. It's a synchronized live clone of the Vault. Both sites log into each local vault, and if someone makes a change to the files in this vault, immediately that data gets synchronized across in the other vault. So people know that something's been updated and they can see the data change. So you're working on the same data pool. Ton, tons of stuff like that. There's tons in Vault Pro that uh, you, you didn't get in Workgroup. That's really what I wanted to just discuss in this video, really. Uh, yes, you're being forced off a of Vault Workgroup, but you are being given a better product. It's just whether or not you want to embrace it or whether it's like, nah, don't really, don't really want to. With regards to the trickiness of the migration, most companies will know that, right? Most companies are going to know whether their implementation is going to be easy to migrate across to Vault Pro or not, because you'll have been involved in getting it live in most cases, right? When the reseller came and did your Vault install, was it a day's job or was it a six-month implementation, right? Did, did, was it all kinds of backwards and forwards and custom programs being written and, oh, we need this, we need that, oh, we'll have to write this program for that. And, right, was it was all that involved or was it just they came in for a couple of days and did it? So you you'll, you, sh you should have a, a vague idea of, of how easy or difficult it's going to be. But, yeah, that's that's really all I wanted to go over uh, with regards to Vault Work Group. July 6th, 2022 is when it's all going down. Yeah, there's not really much else to talk. I don't want to drag this on for any longer than it needs to be. So let me know down in the comments if you've got any thoughts and feelings on it. I'll try and respond to as many of them as I can, like I said. And yeah, that's it for this one. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Doodles!